Hey guys, uh, I was hoping to get a ranked game in today, but uh, I'm going to be a little bit short on time. Got off work pretty late. Unfortunately, uh, the work schedule is going to be pretty busy now, and uh, hopefully I can get as many games in as I can, but uh, it's going to be uh, tight to get in a couple games uh, a day, or even one, so we'll see what we can do. Um, that being said, uh, because of the time crunch, I decided I'm going to um, update um, another build order for the Mongols. They had been changed in Season 7, so we are going to do an update for the the Mangadai opener here. Um, I think I had my old Mangadai play, which was good, um, but I think I've actually modified it from my original a little bit. It's a little bit more refined, a little bit faster, and uh, yeah, we'll just go into it, and um, I guess I'll explain it real quick, and then we'll go into it, and then maybe we'll do a replay afterwards. So, um, Starting Vils, send onto a straggler tree. Um, send your TC onto a wood line, whatever, if it's closest to your Uvu or to where your gold is, um, try to do that. Um, but it always needs to be on a wood line. <clears throat> Grab one of your villagers and send it to go build the Uvu. Go send your Khan out. And um, the villager that builds the Uvu goes onto gold. And your villagers collect one round of. Uh, trees of wood and then they're gonna drop it off and go into sheep and then you're gonna rally until you have seven on food and then one on the <clears throat> one villager on the gold and then two villagers more on to food so you'll have a nine two split on age up and uh, <clears throat> three on the wood one on the food and then uh, one on the gold and then all back on the food is the play there so we'll do it real quick so you guys can see it and my audio is off. Let's put that on. There we go. It definitely uh, messes with me a little bit. Okay. Um, and I kind of messed up my con here. I don't actually scout to this. I usually scout to the middle, so that's just a bad play in general. Okay, it was set up. Village is going to go onto the gold, which is over here. And uh, yeah, we'll just scout as we can. The scouting pattern is a little bit off because we uh, really messed up our opening here. Our opening round. Okay, now we're on 7 1, so send 1 over to the gold. We might be coming back a little bit sooner than we need to. You can need to be back around the two minute mark. <clears throat> Probably could have fit in scouting this over here, so it's alright. Life goes on. Um, after the 7 2, we go up to 9 on food. So we'll send two villagers there. And then we're gonna have one more. I start rallying villagers. <clears throat> Excuse me, on the wood. <laughs> Two sheep here. Oh, that's nice. Not entirely sure how I missed all these. Oh yeah, I ran the wrong way, that's right. Um. So, just to, I guess, give a little bit of detail about the build. Um, besides catching people really off, like, guard, because sometimes they're just not expecting Oh, Mangadai, because oh, I feel like very few people use Mangadai, and even less people go fast age 2 with Mongols, right? So, um, besides, like, the surprise factor which it has, it's, um, it's actually had some really strong timings in terms of denying a second TC for basically all the saves, except for, mm, like, maybe England and, like, uh, Byzantine if they, like, like rush it like if they just flat out rush it but if you're going against an adversary or a roost player you can usually deny it if they decide to go a little bit greedy with their positioning on it um silver tree deer stones kind of depends what you want to do here but it's uh they're both really viable um kind of depends on the matchup and what you think is going to happen so because like in certain matchups like say maybe against delhi like yeah sure you could invest in silver tree but are you actually going to get traders out or is it just going to be sitting there so that's where i usually go deer stones and then i'll build a market right 
maybe against England. Um, I'll drop the silver tree because it's going to take a minute for his bows to get across. But again, kind of depends because you, you know, investing early can be a bad can be a bad thing too if uh, if they catch you screwing around there. And we messed up our build. So <laughs> after three on wood, um, one rallies on the food, and then one rallies on the gold, and then everyone back on the food. So messing up there a little bit. And then these four villagers are going to get shift Q to build the, the range. It's a little bit of a mistake here, but it's okay. Not a big deal. We're going to come back all the way, scout this where we missed, and then drop this off. Now that we have too many villagers on gold and we're messing up our build all over the place, it's a good thing we weren't playing a ranked game. <laughs> um, you're just rallying onto food here. So it's a 6 3 3, and then you're splitting like that. Sure, you keep your TC cute. Don't do like I do. Just mess up a lot. Uh, these villagers are gonna build the range. Make sure you build it with all four, because you really need the the timing. And so you're gonna see that um, you have the. The goal to get a Mangadai and uh, your wheelbarrow at pretty much the same time there. That's going to help your eco scale to what it should scale to. And this kind of sucks. We'll trade on our side first. And uh, yeah, then we're just going to rally across. And you can see where what our timing is looking like here. And how quickly it gets over like... We'll just rally over to here, right? And you guys will see how quickly they get over there, and that's really the, the strength of the of the Mongols is they, they can do that fairly easily. So now this is kind of like really depends on the matchup. So you can double down on Mangadai. Um, you can double down. You can drop a or drop a stable, or yeah, drop a stable is what I'm trying to say. Go to up to 12 on food, I feel it's like the best that you're going to be doing. And so you can see that you get a pretty good timing over here. And you can be catching any greedy second TC placement basically. Like before it finishes building basically. Now it's really important. Um, to do. And doubling down on the Mangadai, so the plus side to doing it, um, is that you will basically, like he, like he's gonna go archers to counter you or horsemen, and in either situation, doubling your Mangadai is just, or like, doubling down on them. Like means he has to further commit into this. So if you like go like double, triple ranges into Mangadai, and you can take like winning fights, um, especially with the, the Ubu production coming in here, um, you're gonna you're gonna scale really like you're gonna set not scale. I guess you're gonna set him up to be super archer heavy and maybe horseman heavy, and then you drop a stable. Um, or, or actually stables, right? You want to drop like three, four stables and do... Like, you're still cranking out like a Mangadai here and there, but then you're really focusing on dropping um, on um, a Keshik production because you're going to have a really nice like synergy there, right? And so sometimes too, like after I drop um, my first range, I'm actually not dropping a, a second range, I'm dropping a stable. So it really depends on what your opponent is doing and like what you think the matchup is and sometimes you can tell by like your first raid and how the opponent reacts in terms of his like his APM reaction. Um, like with the harass and you can see like oh he's really on the ball, it's gonna be hard to get much in. Or like oh yeah I can, like you know he's reacting a little bit late, I got some windows to get lots of raids in with the Mangadai, so we might as well get more in and like we're under TC and we're taking a little bit of damage here but it's not too bad I prioritize getting my um, defense upgrade 
uh, before I get anything else. Um, for my upgrades from the blacksmith, because I do think it's really important that that gets um, in. After about 12-ish villagers on wood, that's more than enough, and you just crank villagers on to food now from here, and you just stay on food. Because behind this you have trade that is scaling, I mean right now it's not like super scaled for us, but um, it's in a pretty good spot. And this is, I mean, obviously you won't, you're not going to catch someone like this really. I mean, you might, right? But if you did, like, you can see, like, the amount of damage you can do with this mass. And that's pretty much it um, for the build. Uh, we're creating the 10 minute mark, which is my benchmarks uh, usually do. But this is, like, a good point to, like, um... Um, to drop a uh, stable, right? And multiple stables behind this. Because you have you have a really strong mass, and he has to... Like, your Mangadai, like, people meme on them a lot as not a really good unit, and, I mean, they aren't really that great of a unit, to be honest. Um, but they don't trade, like, like, soup, like terrible, terrible with archers. As long as you can keep your mass in, a, like, a healthy size compared to theirs, um... <clears throat> It takes two archers to kill one Mangadai in like a 1v1 situation. Like you can you can just straight up fight them. But the thing is the gap closing and the mass size. So if it gets to be a really big mass where during that gap closing that you have to do with your Mangadai, that you're losing a lot of Mangadai in the process, that's when like, okay, now you're not now you're not trading efficiently, now you're just like straight up losing, right? So um Hit the 10 minute mark, a little bit over, went to 10.02 before we hit surrender. It's a little bit unfortunate. Um, and so now we'll look at... Well, one thing I like to do is always check my benchmarks in terms of like my eco on the 10 minute mark. And that kind of gives me an idea for strength of a build order when I'm doing like other sieves, even though I don't do a lot of other sieves, um, or just like different variations of my builds and stuff like that. And um, so, for example, this build at the 10 minute and two second mark is sitting at 81.51. So in our previous caching build, we were sitting at, I believe, 7,800. So this variation has 300 more resources. Um, you know, maybe we got traders out a little bit sooner. I don't know. Um, sometimes it's the, the trade market itself is a little bit further or shorter. So there's little little things. Um, we got tons of sheep this time, too. Uh, actually, actually, actually that's, that's the big thing. We picked up a ton of sheep. And probably more than you would probably pick up in an actual game, and we got our horticulture first. So that's probably the difference in, in this variation is why we have almost 300 more resources, which is something also to keep in mind. Um, you know, the deer are really good, but it does at the 10 minute mark. Let's say, like like so for, for this example, the 10 minute mark. Um, you know, going over to the deer is really good and it's really strong and gives you great tempo. But like for that first scalability, like that first initial 10 minutes or the first 15 or whatever. Um, being down 300 resources because you went over to the deer is equivalent to like two mangadai and a trader or like three traders or whatever you know so i mean i guess it should be more about food right so as you're talking like almost three mangadai's worth of food or two mangadai and like a villager so um yeah little 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 details like that they definitely add up so it's important that when you do go for like your deer transitions and things um, to keep in mind that you've actually slowed your tempo down for a little bit to accelerate it later on, but it is it will affect like the amount of units you have in your strength. So definitely some like innate stuff that you have to like feel. But uh, yeah, that's uh, basically the Mangadai rush, and this is doubling down on Mangadai. We're sitting at 17, 18 Mangadai at the 10 minute mark, which is a, a really strong number, right? Because he's got to have a lot of units cranked out, and if I mean, we did a little bit of raiding here, but if, you, if you're if doing constant raiding, you have two, three groups of Mangadai hitting all sorts of places um, and really keeping them corralled in their base. It can, it can do 
quite a bit of work. So um, that's it for this uh, for this build order, guys. Thank you for watching, and I will catch you on the next one.